leaders were asked to know everything. They, they were the ones who had all the answers. But today, the people who really have the information are the people who deal with consumers, the frontline people, the people who are in the shop floor making the products. The leader doesn't have all the information. In fact, it reaches him very late in life. So, the job of the leader is to really build an inspired organization. So that people have a single purpose, the purpose of delighting the customer and know it and do it well. The job of the uh, leader is not knowing all the answers, but asking the right questions. So is the MBA curriculum uh, prepared for the new uh, style of leadership? The other one is, uh, we know that changes are happening rapidly. And the changes are really little and uh, brutal. Are our MBAs uh, really prepared to handle change? Are they trained to uh, use uh, change to their advantage uh, when uh, the, the changes are happening rapidly? Just to give an example, in our company, the last three years, we have acquired two. two uh, last, last year, we two years back, we acquired a Danone biscuit business. This year, we acquired Cadbury. And uh, any time a merger and acquisition happens, there is a huge turmoil. There is a huge reorganization. And uh, our MBAs of today being trained to uh, handle the pace of change which is happening. The third point is uh, today, uh, it, it was I think Andy Grove who had said uh, only the paranoid will survive, but in today's world, it's only the innovative will survive. So, are our MBAs being uh, taught how to have uh, a culture which fosters innovation? How to, because one, one individual, one leader can't be innovative. You have to take out as to how do you bring out the potential of creative thinking in all your people. So are MBAs being taught uh, 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 how, to, how to be innovative? Is it embedded into the curriculum? So these are the three questions that I had. Uh, and uh, before I end, I would really like to thank XLRI and all the Jesuit educationists uh, for what I am today, thanks to the education I received. And uh, through students like me and uh, so many of alumni here, I know that you are planting the seeds to make the world a better place. I know that uh, if you continue to do the great work that you are doing, the world will become a better place. The vision that you have, which is a peaceful, loving, uh, and, 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 a, and a place uh, where uh, people are happy. So thank you for your patience, and uh, thank you for listening to me. Have a wonderful evening. No other than Dr. Karim Plagio, the Dean of the Salinger School of Business and Management, Loyola University. Well, good evening. It's always a challenge to be the last person that stands between you and networking, which is why we're all here. So I assure you I will be very brief. Um, speaking on behalf of all of the deans that are here this evening, I don't know any of us that we can be extremely proud to be in Holy Cross's and XLRI's shoes right now to claim uh, um, Ambassador Thomas and Mr. Mall as one of our alums. And that's precisely, I think, um, the beauty of the Jesuit education. You all have so much in common regardless of where in the world you went to school because you're Jesuit educated. And I think one of the challenges we have is exactly what Mr. Mall pointed out. Um, Every time there's a scandal, whether it's Enron or Bernie Madoff or the financial crisis or now BP, what the U.S. deans do is typically we'll send a note to each other how many days before they're going to start blaming the MBA program for the latest disaster. <laughs> and it, it's really shocking. It's, it's typically less than a week before it comes out of the press that it's our fault. And, and then what the next reaction you see is one of the supposedly leading schools about what they're doing um, to teach ethics in their program. Well, we, whether or not you can suddenly teach ethics or you can sign an oath and that makes your students ethical, um, we're pleased that they're making attempts. However, the Jesuits have been doing it for 450 years, and we do it exceptionally well. So when, when Mr. Mall talks about, are we teaching our students to be innovative, oh, please stay at the conference for the next two days and hear about the innovative programs that are going on in our, in our curriculum. They are incredible. Uh, we have 
a, a school in, in Taiwan and school in Spain and school in, in the U.S. that have come together and bring students from each of those three locations to live together and study together at the three locations over the course of the year. A fabulous master's program, incredibly innovative. Can we teach our students to deal with change? Absolutely, we can teach our students to deal with change because we teach them how to deal with life and we teach them how to deal with the, the least among us. The real value of the